Welcome to Blank Tape, and I'm Kurt on this special edition of Blank Tape. This episode was recorded on Tuesday, July 24th, 2018, and this episode is our West Coast EP. Uh, hello, this is Kurt, and I'm currently here with my family, so if uh, they'd like to go around and quickly introduce themselves. I'm Grandma Allison. I'm Wayne. Pam. I'm Casey. And uh, yeah, so we're we're here in California. We've just come now to the end of our week long trip. Uh, so I, I don't know. Would anyone like to to share the our reason for being here? How we got here? Maybe mom, since uh, well, grandma and I have been spending our birthdays together almost from the beginning. I think there's only been one or two years that we haven't spent our birthdays together since they're just a day apart. And since Casey and I share a birthday, we thought it would be fun if we brought the kids with us this summer. Yeah, and so you ended up using your credit card points to get us here? Yes, our Southwest points. Go Southwest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, your uncle, my brother, is a pilot for Southwest, so we have to put a plug in for Southwest. Sure, now although... You put your political plug in, huh? <laughs> just to let everyone know we're not yet officially sponsored by southwest but if they'd like to but throw us some we, money yeah. they certainly can that would be nice um but yeah so like like mom said um sean and kyle were already on their canada trip and so they were like hey why don't you come to california with us um so we flew out here um <laughs> It's basically been like an all-expenses-paid vacation for Casey and I because I don't. Aside from the things we bought for ourselves, I don't. We haven't had to pay for the nice hotel that we got to stay in, the DoubleTree Hilton here in Whittier, and uh, you know we got to, you know, just have fun and you know spend lovely quality time with our family. And uh, just to open this up, so it's not just me talking. Well, there is a cool thing. The, um... The, the, where we're speaking from, this house, is only 14 miles from Anaheim. And Anaheim, for anybody that knows, is Disneyland. And, <laughs> yes. Um, so it's very quick. Um, Pam has been to Disneyland like 63 million times. Um, going back to grade school. Yeah. Um, preschool. Preschool. Wow. So, I wasn't here in preschool. Uh, but the new addition <laughs> is... Uh, Casey, it's her was her first time, so she got a button. If you go there, they're, they're pretty, you know, they're pretty excited about first time um, people coming to Disneyland, and um, it was good. Casey could give her a yeah, give us a report. First time, it was good. It was definitely I can see why it's called the happiest place on earth. Uh, <laughs> my favorite ride was definitely the. Uh, Indiana Jones one? What's it called? Yeah, uh, Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Forbidden Eye. Yes. I and guess. it's not actually a new one, but it's still... It's new to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that ride came out... It, we came here in the 90s sometime, and that was a brand new ride yeah. when we, we got out we stood in line here. for an hour and a half, I know, because it was brand new. But the new thing about Disneyland, we're not... And we're, uh, Disneyland could sponsor us, too, but they're not. Um... <laughs> Uh, but the new, th new thing about Disneyland is... John Lasseter, are you listening to this? <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, she went to the same high school as John Lasseter. Yes. Wasn't his buddy. She doesn't get any... <laughs> Kickbacks from Pixar. <laughs> but anyway, um, but they, Disneyland, for anybody that hasn't been or doesn't know, you can buy different levels of passes. And if you buy the, the top pass, you get all these bonus things. And one of the things is... is Technology, you can sign up to ride a ride. Two hours later. Yeah, two hours <laughs> later, and it. Yeah, it's a smartphone app smartphone that you app. can. Uh, yeah, you uh, l you synchronize your ticket to it, and you can use it to create fast pass parties for your group. Yeah. And uh, well, I mean, we got there super early. We got a we got a lift uh, out to the park, yeah, which is works well. Yes. So. Hadn't really used it before, but after using it in Austin to get to and from the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones concert, um, I, it proved very valuable and useful. Um, so, yeah, we utilized that and to get to the park. And a Lyft driver going out said, don't 
reserve a lift going back. And that's exactly true because there's so many people trying to leave the park, trying to come in and go out that all you got to do is go out to the area, say, I want to lift. And there's a lift driver there. So don't, yeah. don't. But we, uh, yeah, we left super early in the morning and we had a very nice driver named Lewis um, and, you know, gave us some insider information, uh, tips and tricks on Disneyland. Um, so that's how we found out about, oh, go to City Hall and Casey can get her first time visit button. And, um, well, does anyone want to share what happens after the park opened and we realized that uh, things weren't uh, working 100%? Well, the technology doesn't always work 100%, and we were there very early in the morning, and there was a glitch in the system, and it wasn't accepting the fast pass stuff. And so it ended up being people queuing up at information kiosks and stuff, and it was pretty funny. People were that obviously had been came there a lot would just walk by those of us in line going, oh, your fast pass doesn't work, right? And we're like, yeah, and they're like, yeah, and they'd move on to their rides. But it was good. It, they it fixed it in about an hour or so. They had the system up and running. Right. We had to, We were in Tomorrowland. Dad and I were in line, and then Casey was at City Hall, getting her button and or in the process of getting her button. And Mom had dropped her ticket somehow, and so she had to go back out to get it reprinted. And then I wasn't listening to Casey very well, but she was saying, "No, come to City Hall." as a group and they will fix us. And so we ended up Well, that's good that we didn't though, because we stood in line in in the queue right. for about thirty five minutes, maybe a little bit more. And because we queued up, they on our phones gave us two free fast pass. Just free. We didn't have to schedule it. You just go up Yeah, it was like a phone, freebie. Like a freebie to get it to jump in line. Mm-hmm. So Kurt and I got each got two. Then we, as a group, went to City Hall, and they gave us two more. All. Right, for a four, for a yeah. bundle of four. So it was pretty sweet to have a little glitch in the beginning, and then... They gave everybody, they were like, everybody gets a fast pass <laughs> to you know improve customer satisfaction, which I can certainly understand. Well, our longest ride that we stood was at about 8.50 at night, because right before the fireworks at night. The longest wait. The Finding was, Nemo the, submarine yeah, voyage ride. Which was cool. I actually think it's better at night than the day. Because we've yeah. done it in the day, but at night, you can't it, see. Yeah, because in the daylight, the water's piercing, the sunlight's piercing through the water. It's harder to, it's harder to see all the stuff. Well, it's also harder to have the illusion that you're, you know, deep down in. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's true. Cause like a bunch of bubbles go by the window and the audio track's going and it's a, well, of course, Mom, if you remember the submarine ride, it was just a generic submarine ride. It wasn't tied yeah. to a movie the, before. The big thing with the submarine ride for me was always the mermaids, and I always wanted to be one of the mermaids. And then one time I was on there, and I saw her turn her head and, you know, suck air from a hose kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, man, I was so <laughs> bummed. <laughs> I really was. But now it's tied to movies. Yeah, Finding Nemo. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, like I said, that was probably the little – the longest line and i know casey was like uh oh, i really have to go to a bathroom and you know you were just tired by that point so yeah, i don't know if it was your i was that no, wasn't, wasn't your favorite ride no she already said it was all right ride. but i wouldn't have waited an hour in line for it yeah right. well we but had, it was really we funny had done, we had had so much luck with getting on rides in like three minutes right we did the jungle uh jungle, jungle cruise, cruise was the very first ride we did when we, we got in we the didn't park. even use a fact we just we, we just, just got in line, like, waited no about line here. five just, minutes. Yeah, and we were on. And I, I know it's it, it's not super great, but it's funny and it's great for the kids. And there was like no wait. So and I was I was humming uh, the Weird Al tune Skipper Dan while we were in in line. Those of you who don't know that Weird Al actually wrote a pastiche song in the style of Weezer. Uh, called Skipper Dan, and it's basically about the Jungle Cruise ride at Disneyland. And so they used some of the lines from the, you know, Weird Al incorporated some of the standard lines that they use, like, look, the backside of water and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was fun uh, seeing all the animatronics, the elephants having baths, the hippos getting upset, the piranhas the eating. The piranhas actually scared me. I was <laughs> yeah. The piranhas trying to eat which the is, boat. Which is not a super high-tech aspect, but 
They do it well. The witch. Oh yeah, what was it? The witch doctor. Oh yeah, this is Paul. He's our head salesman here. <laughs> the traitor. Yeah, the traitor. Uh, oh, the guys on the totem pole. The rhinos trying to poke him, and they're like uh, uh, trying to stay up on the totem pole. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. Even that sounds very different than when I. So no, that, that's that been that part's been around. They, the they changed that, the spiel a little bit. Yeah, updated the lines. Yeah, yeah. well, they the and, and the standard for everyone that, that goes, you have to go to. Uh, it's one of uh, it's a small, it's a small world. world. That is always just a great thing. And I know a number of you years ago or a year or so ago, um, uh, Sparrow, uh, Jack Sparrow. De- De- Actually, was there live? Oh, so for Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, someone. Oh, that's Pirates of the Caribbean. But he po. Yeah, but he, sorry, I'm I'm switching. I'm switching. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> right. I'm getting confused. Pirates right. Of the Caribbean. Back in the day, before Pirates of the Caribbean became a huge movie franchise, it was just a regular ride. There was no Jack Sparrow whatsoever. Right. Then right. the movies came out and were popular, and then they were like, oh. Let's throw him in the ride. Right, Whereas we, Eddie Murphy did the Haunted Mansion movie, and no one was like, "Let's stick Eddie Murphy right, in the ride." Right. That never did. Sorry, I was confusing the two. I was mixing them. But uh, Sparrow, I saw in a video like that someone took a year or so ago that he was actually there. He actually dressed up in character and wasn't animatronic. He was, he was there. But. We, I saw him at least for uh, animatronics at least four times. Yeah, he in, he came uh, up a couple different times. Yeah. I think hiding behind somebody who had a map. Yeah. Um, oh, and then they were dunking the guy in the fountain, and it's like, where is Jack Sparrow? And then he's hiding behind a fence, like watching them. Yeah. So it, it, they they did incorporate that back into it. That and was Barb- a double E ticket. Oh, double E ticket, Grandma. No, oh, yeah. just E tickets. Oh, they weren't E-ticket. double E tickets. They were just E tickets. And when I was a kid, of course, they were all tickets. So what you did when you were going is you had your fare to get in or you knew somebody who would sign you in, like Leslie Hubbard's older brother. And um, and then you'd just buy e-tickets. And then you'd go around to all your family members before you went and scrounge all the A, B, and C tickets for the, <laughs> quote, dumb rides. Like Carousel, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, Peter Pan, Snow White, which used to be like A and B. To sometimes see I know, but the the Snow White ride was scary. That's the one where Courtney was about three, maybe not quite three. And when she came back from Disneyland, everybody asked her if she liked it or not, and she said, "Me no like the hee hee." <laughs> and nobody could figure out what it was for a while, and then all of a sudden, it was like, "Oh yeah, there's this." witch that pops out as you go through the ride. Mm-hmm. And she has her apple and she says, here my dear, have an apple. <laughs> yes. And there's the hee hee. And there's the hee hees. And the hee hee's still there. Yes. Yes, so you can, yeah, we actually rode the Snow White ride after we had dinner, so. Yeah. yeah that's, yeah. I always liked that one. I never liked the teacups. We didn't do. The we did not do the teacups. Casey, Casey was, was like, right. "I will be sick if we ride the teacups." <laughs> well, we did Space Mountain, and you said, and that was good. That was really good. But you said if it was I like fifteen seconds, <laughs> if it was like fifteen seconds longer, it wouldn't have been good. Yeah, you see the pictures that they snap, <laughs> and I just look super unimpressed. Like, <laughs> Because I was really just trying not to throw up on... In Mom and Dad's picture, there's a Creeper McCreeperson sitting behind Mom that's like, kind of face in the pictures. In ours, in our picture, there's a girl in the front seat. She's crying. And then the, in the middle seat, there's like a, there's a boy doing like, rock on! Like, he's having well, a Well, the thing is about the, tick, about the pictures is that if you buy that top pass, all of the pictures that they take in the different rides or the photographers that are there situated throughout the park that you see take pictures that's all free right just, so you, you use the qrc code or yeah. you get a card and uh yeah so it'll link up to your account so, so we actually got quite a number of good pictures like uh, we got some family pictures in front of the yeah. tomorrowland Tomorrow sign the big uh whirling Com- complex machine looking thing and uh and mom you uh had us on a mission to go find yeah. pictures with mickey. mickey yes that was my mission i have two of my students with special needs um really really like mickey mouse so i had said since we're going to disneyland i have to get a picture with mickey so we went to mickey's toontown and 
walked through Mickey's house and then waited in line. And we got our turn with Mickey. And we got some great pictures. Professional photographers taking yeah. the pictures, which were free because we had the top pass. Yeah. Um, and we got good pictures. So I'm going to, when I get home, I'm going to send it to, I guess I can just do it from my phone. I'll take it somewhere like probably, you know, Office Depot, Office Max, whatever. Oh, and they just do Snapfish or... Well, no, I want to blow it up. Yeah, you can to do like that. like 22 to 24. Yeah. And then have it laminated and I'm going to put it up in my classroom. That'd Could, be fun. Well, that should be fun. Yes. My kids will be like, Mickey, well, Mickey, and pointing, Mickey, yes, Mrs. C saw Mickey. Hug, hug Mickey, hug Mickey, yes, Mrs. C was hugging Mickey. So that will be conversation well, the, all year. the cool thing about where the, photo the photographers, and I didn't realize it, once you get the pictures that are included in the ticket price, you want to take pictures. I mean, you, you see the photographers and you don't turn away, you actually engage. And when we were at the carousel, Right outside the carousel is the... Oh, there, yeah, because it's King Arthur's carousel, and there's a sword in the stone uh, in front of the carousel, uh, right, you know, right after you go through the Cinderella's castle. And if you stand with your back to the carousel, like the photographer did, and you position yourself on the, on the stone, like you two did, the backdrop is the castle. So the picture is... Go even if you were there just by yourself, take it standing with your back to the carousel and then the background is is, is the castle so it looks very king arthur like right like disneyland like disneyland <laughs> like disneyland well dear um anything else you want to add for disneyland i mean like you know like we've all been talking about it's been your it was your first time and i think a pretty what, huge what component. do you think i mean have you been to six flags yeah i've been to a number of the six flags okay what do you think of the atmosphere of Disney versus Six Flags. The atmosphere is definitely better in Disney uh, just because you've got the characters walking around right. and Six Flags it's more condensed to the opening gates and then that's about right. it. Right. Um, well next time you'll have to do Knott's. Oh or, Knott's Berry Farm. Or California Adventure. Yeah, Cal we, yeah we didn't even touch California Adventure which is the theme park they built south of Disneyland. Right. But what's the difference between the Disneyland? I've only been to Disneyland. The, I've never been. We've to, never been to California Adventure, so we don't know. We would okay. all be newbies. Yeah, so that we'll we'll go ahead and put it in our planners. We'll we'll plan yes. for California Adventure next time because we've checked this one off. Well, yeah, put it on in your bucket list. In our bucket list, of course. Yeah, because <laughs> there's a Guardians of the Galaxy converted uh, Tower of Terror ride. And, or, or something, I don't know. We, there's a cool Guardians ride there that we're interested in and plenty of other things going on. Um, I think the Star Wars Bay was really cool. Oh, yes, there was a whole area where it was uh, Star yes. Wars memorabilia and uh, we got our pictures taken with Kylo Ren and Chewbacca and uh, oh. Casey had us a uh, match. So she was wearing her Sugar Skull Darth Vader shirt and I was wearing my Stormtrooper shirt so when we took pictures of Kylo Ren he was very impressed and <laughs> wanted us to be full-fledged members of the dark side and so that was impressive then we went and saw Chewbacca and Chewbacca <laughs> didn't like us at first and then we were like no 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 we're spies it's okay and I think wearing my 1990s goofy hat you know gave us some cred and uh, Chewbacca liked my beard and, um, yeah, then we took pictures with Chewie and, yeah, I got to see a lot of cool memorabilia there in Star Wars uh, Bay. Um, just, I don't know. Like, you said Indiana Jones is your favorite. And that was the ride that, you know, we were getting near, starting to get near the end of the day that you were like, I don't know if I want to go on it. And um, we actually ended up using our two yes. freebie ones that yeah. Dad and I got um, to get us on the ride. Because uh, it was still a long, even at the end of the day, it was still a long wait. But you and you got to sit in the driver's seat. We got in the yeah, first yeah. row, and Casey was in the Driving. the steering wheel. <laughs> I remember one of the lady uh, behind us was like, "Is she a good driver?" And I was like, "Yeah, she's totally good." When, when you were like, "Nope, terrible <laughs> driver." <laughs> so, and then uh, of course, if you haven't been on the ride, it's it's a it's a it looks like a jeep, but it like you know. It bucks just like a Jeep would driving over uh, rough rocks. terrain, yeah, rocks. rocks and stuff. Uh, 
So it was super fun. I think uh, I play acted, you know, because I was telling Casey, like, drive, drive, drive. And, of course, there's certain parts where the the Jeep stalls to build suspense before it revs up again. Um, you drive through a tunnel and you, there's air jets going off like darts are being shot. And I remember I clapped my uh, hand on my neck and I was like, oh, I'm hit. Uh, keep driving. <laughs> and uh, we got to see animatronic Harrison Ford. And Sala was talking to us. John Rhys Davies was talking to us in the line, telling us about the Temple of the Forbidden Eye. And yeah, I think overall it was a it was a good day. But I think the next day after Disneyland, we all pretty much yeah, were wiped. We, we, we were, stayed there for sixteen hours. We got there. We got there at seven thirty, and it opened at eight. So we were in right at eight. Maybe they opened a little bit earlier, and we left at about a, right before eleven. Yeah. So yeah. We, yeah, that was it like stayed, that, it stayed open to one. Right. Yeah. People so, were coming in. We were leaving at ten fifty or ten fifty five. People were coming in while we were leaving, and obviously season passes or whatever. Right. Just so, coming for the cool. I think that's the longest we'd ever been at that park. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I don't was, think I've ever done that many hours. Um, it was marathon. The fellow I taught with for a long time, Jim McMains. He and his wife always bought. Um, season pass and they went down two or three times a month and just had dinner because because it was they liked the happy, restaurants and the parking was easy and, and it was the happiest place on earth yeah <laughs> oh goodness <laughs> don't mind the technical difficulties people just call in the house we're you know it's a live recording we're just sitting here around grandma's table and you know we're waiting we're all packed up, ready to go, and I just thought it'd be a nice kind of way to end the trip is just kind of going through everything that we experienced okay, on the trip. what about the, the museum? Oh, yeah, yeah, so that was one of the first things we That's did when we got here. Hidden gem. What was it called? Workman? The Workman Temple Homestead. Workman yeah. and Temple, because the last names were Workman. Right, it was originally the Workman family, and then the temple daughter family. married into the Temple, temple. family. So the Workman and Temple... So the family responsible for Temple City. Uh, no. Uh, the temples, at least, because the temples yeah, may right, build their own town. But also city of... Uh, yeah. It's located in the yes, city of industry. Yes, you're right. Temple, like temple right? designs. Temple design. Yes. And so it's located here in City of Industry off Don Julian Road. And uh, you can find them on Facebook and Twitter. I know I did and tagged yeah. them on. Uh, you know, letting them know we had a good time. But essentially, it's an old, you know, 1800s house yeah. next door. 1840 house that was then... Built of a, do- uh, you know, the original adobe is still part of the core part of the house. Yeah, well, before. it was Mexico when they got there. Yeah. Right, it was still part of uh, Mexico. That's right. Um, mm-hmm. And then the next door to it is a 1920s Spanish colonial yes. revival mansion. But on the house that was originally built in 1840... They then expanded on that in the 1880s and built a two-story on top of that. But around the adobe. Uh, but around so the, the adobe. Original so adobe the original adobe is still part of the yeah, house. Yeah, and you can see it. And the cool thing is it's all free. It doesn't cost a dime. You can park free. The tours go on. Uh, you can check online. I think they call Right. They also park. have a sign there. It's basically like every hour, alternating hour, they'll switch uh, between tours of the each appropriate uh, house yeah. and then they'll walk you through it um, but yeah it was it was interesting and it wasn't like you just stood in one part of the house and she told you you actually got to go upstairs and we really didn't we didn't go upstairs in the 1800s house no, but we no. did go upstairs in the 1920s yeah. uh, Revival. House. and and you actually played piano at yes, Mary, the Mary the tour guide asked if anyone played, and I was and volunteered. I embarrassed you yes. by saying you were in a very TV. in a very beautiful music room that had a well, yeah. it was a library and music room combined. Yeah. Um, so the stained glass windows had famous authors in one part or uh, famous composers on the other. But yeah, really mm-hmm. nice old piano that I just I just did a one four one five one and kind of hummed along, but. The doors were, in the, in, 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 you know, humongous and and and, and, and nor, 
I'm trying to think of the word. Very ornate. Ornate. They were ornate for being wooden doors. The hinges alone stuck out, and you know yeah. these were like the, super. The front door was probably two and a half inches thick of some oak or yeah, it was or something heavy duty. Very, and then very thick walls because if you'd have built it before air conditioning, you'd want it thick so that you yeah, could the whole point. Of yeah, could keep it cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And kind of a crazy story about that family, you know, they they got there at the right, right opportune time to make money and yeah. put eight mo- years, like seven eight years before the gold rush of eighteen forty eight. So they were there raising cattle and selling growing. it up north for all the and panhandlers. Made a bunch of money. The gold rush left, and they they moved. Then they tried to open their own bank. The right. bank failed. The guy that they borrowed money from got all their stuff. <laughs> the Temple family bought some of it back. And their son discovered oil, so then they had oil money, and then that went, you know, and then they started building on the 1920s house, but then they got busted again, and the Mrs. Temple, she died died before the 1920s house. Just a fascinating story, and even when we were inside the, the center, apparently there was a lion farm and an ostrich farm and a gator farm nearby in the community if you saw those signs, well, it, it certainly said with the lion farm plaque that I was reading that that's where the MGM lion came from. I guess it was a sanctuary with rescued lions or something like that. Yeah, so it's a lot of stuff to do. I mean, In California, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and we didn't even touch like the Griffith Park Observatory or, or um, any of the other parks. Downtown or, or downtown, right. like um, the old P.O. Pico Mansion which is in Pico Rivera, or even the Bailey House, which another vacation has come by, and I've still not gone through the Bailey House, which is right around the corner, first house in Whittier. Um, we is that hit, the yellow one? Yeah. We hit King Richard's Antiques yesterday. Oh, yes. We found some pretty interesting things in there. A Dragula car. We found some old comic books. I got an old beer stein. Dad, I think, got a new shirt. Yeah. Well, it... Um, it was a big citrus packing uh, plant. It, it, Whittier was huge in Southern, Southern California in citrus industry. Um, and so well before... Um, and then avocados. Yeah, and so there's this huge plant, and they, it's all converted. It's a huge floors up and down, and they've converted it into just a big antique um, place. Huge. Yeah. No. People rent space. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. But so there's that's... also stuff that's theirs, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but people rent space. So it's on a on a commission type of stuff, but it, it's a repository for places to go if you want antiques. Yeah, it was, uh, it was super cool diving in. Um, and then, of course, just thinking else, what we did on our trip, we had all kinds of nice food. You know, we uh, we went to some really nice restaurants. Were there any in particular that any favorites? Rusty Monk pretzels. Oh yeah, the Rusty Monk on Greenleaf here in Whittier is uh, mm-hmm. pretzels. The pretzels. Sorry, Fredericksburg. The Rusty Monk has better pretzels. And we told that to him. They have good ones. I'm German. And we lived in Germany for four years, but I'm telling you, the Rusty Monk, it's got some really. Excellent. Excellent pretzels. Yes. Any? I think I like the California Grill the best. Oh, yeah. We went there twice. Yay. <laughs> Which has been remodeled. It got remodeled yeah. last year. And, um, oh, it start, when I was a kid, when they built it, it was a Bob's, what we call Bob's Jer, Bob's Big Boy Junior. So it's gone through a few renovations since then. The most recent one, which started about last year, is really mm-hmm. updated. Mm-hmm. It. I mean, it's really, it's cool. Very, very, it's very much more open now. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, Basically, every restaurant we went to, pretty much, it's a regular haunt of grandmas, and she's like a rock star when she walks in, and they're <laughs> they're quick to be like, "Oh, right this way to your table, ma'am." And <laughs> well, in, in fact, that's at the California Grill is where it is. There was people waiting outside. And we just walked right in and sat down because, like, oh, well. Because the people outside had no idea that a 20 minute wait. Well, they might have thought we had reservations. Well, they might have thought anything. And then Francisco has said to me, you always have reservations here. (laughs) So that's kind of nice. And, um, oh. Walked around the streets a little bit. 
Yeah, we found no, we found some interesting shops. I know we picked up some records, um, got some comic books, and uh, well, Beerstein was already mentioned, but um, got to visit with Uncle Carl and Aunt Sylvia, who we hadn't seen since they came out to our wedding. So it's nice to see them here in their native California, their native environment, their native yes. natural habitat. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to see his finished. Uh... Second lounge. story lounge. Yes, the second story lounge. Uncle Carl's <laughs> personal liquor depository and beer emporium, which is very nice. Had some nice drinks. And Uncle Carl and I got to visit because I stayed a little bit later just to talk and visit. And nice time. You know, I guess considering I'm Uncle Carl's only nephew. So You're pretty his much. favorite nephew. I'm his only his favorite and his worst nephew all at the same time. <laughs> but, uh, well, I don't know, Grandma, what have, what have you thought of our visit? Anything you'd like to share? Well, I wondered how I was going to manage for a whole week with, you know, four extra people around. And it has been an absolute delight. I've just enjoyed every minute of it. And I always hate to say goodbye. So you're going to have to come back again. Of course. And seeing your cat Jack, Dad and I saw Jack when he was just a little guy, and he mm-hmm. hadn't been here very long last year. And this year he's, I would say, kind of like a teenager. He's still kind of wild. Yep. Um, you know, running around like a crazy dude. Whereas our cats at home, of course, are big, fat, lazy girls, and they just kind of laze around. And yeah, well, he doesn't have as much fur to haul around as they do. Or fat. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. But um, so it's it's always fun to see him. Now he didn't come sleep with us this time. Last summer he came and slept with us. Yeah, he's a very handsome little boy. Yes, very fierce house. Yes, mountain you, lion. You took a Casey took a Instagram picture of him and. Oh his, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I was playing with him on his cat tree, and which he he's very cool. wary of going up to the very tip top. But he looks very fierce in that picture. He does look very he? fierce in that picture. He's not really, but he looks very fierce. <laughs> he doesn't have front claws, so I wasn't being clawed to death. So that's good. Well, I don't know. Is there anything else that anyone would like to add before we, uh, I suppose, sign off with this special travel edition of the show? I would say to all of you, journey mercies. Angels on your bodies. Have a wonderful flight home. Don't forget which way you come to see me.